Buen dia. Buen dia. Welcome to another Things on Thursday video. We really need to work out another name for that. Yeah. <laughs> but our last video, the one with family in Las Perlas, brought up a lot of questions about something my sister said. Because I asked her, how, how was, was it, in it the cabin? sleeping without air conditioning? And her answer, of course, was, well, it's a little hot, but Gabe suffered the most. <laughs> So we want to talk about air conditioning today. So yes, we do have an AC. Some people thought, but, but well, you don't have air conditioning. We do have air conditioning. We have two air conditioners. Yes. And we have one of them set up to run off of our battery bank. But we don't do that all the time. So we kind of reserve running the air conditioner for certain occasions. Yeah, it's all about environment. You know, when we're in Panama and it's raining and it's 90 degrees, 100% humidity, yeah, we kick on the AC because otherwise this place would turn into a mold box. Yeah, so air circulation is huge and an air conditioner is amazing for that because it circulates through every part of the boat. So it yeah. is really great for that. And it's a drier air supposedly because it runs through the compressor so you're taking out the humidity so that's really good for the boat. So it's, it's actually, Kent always said you have to run the AC otherwise your boat's gonna smell like an old sailor and that's not good. You can't lose that smell he would say. Yeah <laughs> and it's very true and it does seem to make a difference. At first we thought eh, who, like because it was comfortable it was fine we weren't running it but we were getting more mold. Then the other occasion where we run the air conditioner is sometimes it doesn't matter how far away from land you are. The bugs will find you. Yeah. Anyway, those are the occasions when we do run the air conditioner. So the next big thing would be why don't we run it overnight? All night. All night. Well, first of all, I know we have a big lithium battery bank, but it's it's not enough. You to run to run the AC a 16,000 BTU AC all night long uses a ton of power um, so the other option would be run the generator and a lot of people ask well why aren't you running the generator all night well that's eight to ten hours of generator running yeah so it'd be like four five four to five gallons yeah of fuel and that's almost an entire jerry can and when we're out in the middle of the islands there are, there's nowhere to go buy gas no. so you don't just burn through your fuel like that no. but also it's honestly not very uncomfortable. Yeah. It is, which is why I asked Lauren that question, it can be uncomfortable for somebody who is used to sleeping in a residential home with air conditioning running non-stop. You just don't use that kind of power all the time yeah. on a boat. Not even for family. I yeah, love I you, know. Gabe, but it's not happening. Power conservation is king on a boat. Yeah. Okay, so then it goes into, uh, well then how are you running your air conditioner <laughs> off of your battery bank? Because it is not something that every single person does because it requires a little bit of tweaking to your setup. Yeah, and I'm going to try to do this as simply as possible. Like I always say, I'm no expert. This video is not for experts. If you're like a <laughs> micro engineer of some sort, then you probably find a lot of flaws with it. But yeah. I do know from experience, we did this video, what, three years ago now in the RV? Three, probably four, I don't know, it's been a long time. Yeah, where we tried to run our AC and we found mm -hmm. that the issue was the inverter. So the inverter could handle it, but there's this surge, this spike, this um, just power boom uh, that hits. And that's how we also found the solution. Okay, before you get too excited and click that AC button, there's definitely a few things you wanna consider. The first being your air conditioner unit. Ours is 16,000 BTU. It's a beast. Uh, we only have one connected. We have two on the boat. An 8,000 BTU would be much better. It would run twice as long as 16. Okay, anyway. <laughs> the other thing to consider is battery. Uh, our battery bank is 1,200 amp hours of lithium power. And it sounds big, but it's still not big enough to run the AC indefinitely. Uh, the other thing is solar or a way to recharge your batteries. This is the one that really matters. This is like the ultimate. The inverters have this maximum surge or maximum spike. It's usually written in the documentation from the manufacturer. Our current inverter has a maximum spike of 60 amps. Our last inverter had a maximum spike of 50 amps. Cruise Air, the air conditioning company, says that our amps pulled Locked rotor amps is what it's called. I know it's confusing. Our locked rotor amps are 70. So that is 10 amps more than what our inverter can handle. And bingo, that's how we found the easy start when we made that RV AC video. We need something to soften that initial hit that comes from the AC compressor. Bring those amps down. Exactly. As luck would have it, one of the engineers for Easy Start 
lives in Florida and he's been following our adventures ever since we created that first video about running our air conditioner off the grid. So now travel back in time with me to Florida when we were there right after we bought the boat, outfitting, getting ready and preparing to take off. You ready? Hey, Nikki, Jason, how are you? Good, Good. thanks for you? coming out. Good to be here. This is Mateo. And at this point, he's seen enough of our How Not To videos that he gleefully volunteered to come over, help us install our Easy Start, and let us nerd out on some testing. Now, before we go installing the Easy Start, we're gonna do a quick little test so we can see what the surge or that spike is on the air conditioner without it. So this device here is an amp clamp, and this is what we typically use to measure current. This is a really fancy one, but it's still not accurate enough to get that one-tenth of a second surge that comes from this compressor. So, Mateo built this one, which <laughs> is maybe not quite as slick, but it actually works really well, and it will show us the amp draw from the surge of the compressor. That one-tenth of a second, boom, that we're gonna get. Go ahead and turn the breaker back on, turn it into cool mode, and away we go. There we go. Oh, wow. So 55. 55 <laughs> amps of start surge. And it's that split second surge that causes the issues. Tells you the truth as to really what's going on. Because yeah. these amps matter to your inverter, yeah. matter to your generator, your shore power. matter to your shore power. Yeah. So great. Now that we have the before, let's go ahead and install our next device okay. that we're going to test. All right. All right, Jason, hold on. Yeah. What is our next device? Our next device, all right. So here, this is a hard start. Mateo brought one on our last video that we did on the RV. A lot of people recommended buying a hard start because it's much less expensive. Well, according to Mateo, he says they're much less effective as well. And well, you know how much we love testing. Let's get her hooked up. All right. Factory installed a device to try and help reduce the start surge too, but as you can see, it, didn't do much. it wasn't as effective as we need. It's all set to go. Okay. Let's go ahead and hook our measurement devices back up. This is so neat. I, I love this part. <laughs> I really, really love this part. It's so cool. And we are cooling. Cool. Here we go with the hard start. 53.3. I'm not saying that hard starts are ineffective completely, but they don't always work. They don't always provide you a reduction. They may help a compressor that is having problems starting for completely different reasons, yeah. Yeah. but as far as reducing the startup surge, doesn't always happen. Okay. That's Which what is, we're seeing here. Exactly. So we've proven that point. Exactly. So let's it move might on. be less expensive, but it definitely doesn't work the same as a soft start. Correct. Okay. All right. Moving on. Let's do mm -hmm. easy start. Can you kill it again, Nick? Uh, yeah. That was easy. Are we ready? We have We're ready. both clamps on and we are ready for the AC. Power on. Five second delay from the soft starter. 16.6! Yes! 16.6! So we were, we started at like 53 and 54, and now we're at 16.6? Yes. Quick. What's that math? That's 70% reduction. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? That's a salesman face. <laughs> yep, that he's happy. Good. <laughs> that's good. But somebody check that math real quick. Yeah. Yes. Me, but somebody check that math, make sure he was right. Uh, but no, so that's awesome. Yeah, and that's what awesome. does all that mean? Like. Um, and that means we should stop finish the install and put everything back together so we can actually have AC. Whoa, time travel's crazy. What do you think about that hair? I liked it. We could go for it again. All right, it's about time for another mop chop. The purple sofa. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Well, here we are back in present day about two years later, almost two years later, and we've had no issues. And I know the next question I'm gonna get is, well, how long can you run your AC? Well, that doesn't really have anything to do with the soft start. The soft start is just about starting the AC. But just to appease everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. Air conditioner on, and hit the cool button. Temperature down, I just heard the compressor kick on. Cooling, we are live. 83 amps, it's pulling out 83 amps right now. 
86 amps. It, it all varies based on how much solar we're bringing in, so this is just a real-time number. But based on these numbers right now, we could run our AC for four or five hours and not really have to worry about it, especially because the sun's coming up higher and we'll get more solar coming in. I'll go into more detail on our website because there's just too many factors that make this impossible to do like a real-time test. I'll put the link here and in the description down below. We have to make sure and say thank you to Mateo for coming over and helping us install and do all the testing. It was definitely loads of fun. And a big thanks to Mateo. He offered a discount oh, yes. if you are interested in running your AC off of your batteries or maybe you have like a little Honda 2000 generator. Yeah, it, it works for other things yeah, too. Including shore power if you're at the end of the dock and you're on 30 amp power and it's like crappy power, then a soft start will help there as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, it's, it is a cool little device. Uh, it's not a parade, it's not a parade. <laughs> it's not a paid <laughs> plug. This is not sponsored. Nobody or... asked us to shoot this, except for you, our viewers. Yeah. This is something that you've asked us to shoot for quite a while. Right, and so as we were talking to Mateo, telling him we were going to actually do a video. He do said, a video. He said, cool, here's a discount code, which is wins. We'll put no, a bunch. GWTW. Oh. Discount code is GWTW. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so click over to our website. You can uh, get all the details on the discount code if you want an easy start. Um, all the information on how we run our air conditioner, Ooh. numbers. Ask questions in the comments. If you ask questions, Mateo said he will do his best Ooh. to monitor and respond, especially on our website. On YouTube, the, the questions get lost so quickly. Yeah. But if you click over to our website, he said he will monitor those questions and answer as best as he can. Yes. And we'll throw in our two cents as well. Yeah, but we asked for his help because you're gonna ask stuff we're not gonna yeah. be able to answer. He's the expert. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Ciao. Stay cool. Ciao. That's what they say here. Ciao. Ciao. Mm -hmm. Not, um, not buena or buenas or no or buen dia or or buenas noches buenas dias just chao just chao